Chapter 4 Amber and the Orange Fairy Home Sweet Home Rachel dashed forward and grabbed the frog round his plump green tummy. The frog turned his head and glared at her, his eyes bulging. And what do you think you're doing? He croaked. Rachel was shocked. She let go of the frog. He hopped away from her, looking very annoyed. It's a talking frog, Kirsty gasped with her eyes wide. And it looks like it's wearing glasses. Bertram. Amber flew down from Kirsty's shoulder. I didn't know it was you. Bertram bowed his head as Amber hugged him. Thank goodness you're safe, Miss Amber, he said happily. And may I say, it's very good to see you again. Amber beamed at Rachel and Kirsty. Bertram is, isn't an ordinary frog, you know, she explained. He's one of the King Auburn's footmen. Oh, yes, said Kirsty. I remember now. We saw the frog footman when he, when we went to Fairyland with Ruby. But they were wearing purple uniforms then, Rachel added. Excuse me, miss, but a frog in a purple uniform would not be a good idea on Rainsbow Island. Bertram pointed out, it's much better if I look like an ordinary frog. But what are you doing here, Bertram? asked Amber. And where's Ruby? Don't worry, Miss Amber, Bertram replied. Miss Ruby is safe in the pot. He suddenly looked very stern. King Oberon sent me to Rainspell. The Cloud Fairy spotted Jack Frost Goblin sneaking out of Fairyland. We think he has sent them here to stop the Rainbow Fairies being found. Kirsty fell to shiver and ran down her spine. Jack Frost Goblins, she said. They're his servants, Amber explained. Her, her wings trembled she, and she looked very scared. They'd rather keep Fairyland cold and grey. Never fear, Miss Amber, Bertram croaked. I'll look after you. Suddenly, a shower of red fairy dust shot out of the pot. Ruby fluttered out. I heard voices. She shouted joyfully. Amber, I knew it was you. Ruby, Amber called, and she cartwheels through the air towards her sister. Rachel and Kirsty watched as the two fairies flew into each other's arms. The air around them fizzed with tiny red flowers and orange bubbles. Thank you, Kirsty and Rachel, said Ruby. She and Amber floated down to them, holding hands. It's so good to have Amber back safely. What about you? Rachel asked. Have you been all right in the pot? Ruby nodded. I'm fine now that Bertram is here, she replied, and I've been making the pot into a fairy home. I've brought my shell with me, Amber said. It will make a lovely bed for us. Show her, Rachel. Rachel put her bag down on the grass and took the creamy orange shell out of it. It's beautiful, said Ruby. Then she smiled at Rachel and Kirsty. Would you like to come and see our new home? She asked. But the pot's too small for Kirsty and me to get inside. Rachel began. Then she began to tingle with excitement. Are you going to make us furry size again? Ruby nodded. She and Amber flew over the girls' heads, showering them with fairy dust. Rachel and Kirsty stared, started to shrink, just as they had done before. Soon they were tiny, the same size as Ruby and Amber. I love being a fairy, Kirsty said happily. She twisted round to look at her silvery wings. Me too, Rachel agreed. She was getting used to seeing flowers as tall as trees. Bertram hopped over to the pot. I'll wait outside, he croaked. Come this way, said Ruby. She took Rachel's hand and Amber took Kirsty's. Then the fairy led them towards the pot. Rachel and Kirsty fluttered through the air, dodging a butterfly that was as big as they were. Its wings felt like velvet as they brushed gently past. I'm getting better at flying, Kirsty laughed 
as she landed neatly on the edge of the pot. She looked down eagerly. The pot was full of sunlight. There was little chairs made from twigs tied with blades of grass. Each chair had a cushion made of, from a soft red berry. Rugs of bright green leaves covered the floor. Shall we bring in the shell? asked Rachel. The others thought this way was a good idea. When they flew out of the pot, Bertram was already pushing the shell across pushing the shell across the grass towards them. Here you are, he croaked. The shell seemed very heavy now that Rachel and Kirsty were the same size as Ruby and Amber. But Bertram helped them to heave it to, into the pot. Soon the shell bed was placed neatly inside. Ruby lined it with sweet smelling rose petals. The pot looks lovely, Rachel said. I wish I could live here too, said Kirsty. Ruby turned to her sister. Do you like it, Amber? she asked. It's beautiful, Amber replied. It reminds me of our house back in Fairyland. I wish I could see Fairyland again. I miss it so much. Ruby smiled. Well, I can show you Fairyland, she said. Even though we can't go back there yet, follow me. Bertram was still on guard next to the pot when they flew out again. Where are you going, Miss Ruby? He croaked. To the magic pond, Ruby replied. Come with us. She sprinkled her magic just over Rachel and Kirsty quickly. They grew back to their normal size. They went over to the pond. Ruby flew above the water, scattering fairy dust. Just as before, a picture began to appear. Fairyland, Amber cried, gazing into the water. Rachel and Kirsty watched too. Fairyland still looked sad and chilly. The palace, the toadstool houses, the flowers and the trees were all drab and grey. Suddenly, a cold breeze rippled the surface of the water and the picture began to fade. What's happening? Kirsty whispered. Everyone stared down at the pond. Another picture was taking shape. A thin, grinning face with frosty white hair and icicles hanging from his beard. Jack Frost! Ruby gasped in horror. As she spoke, the air turned icy cold and the edges of the pool began to freeze. What's happening? Rachel asked, shivering. Bertram hopped forward. This is bad news, he said. It means that Jack Frost's goblins are close. Chapter 4 Goblin Alert Rachel and Kirsty felt shivers run down their spine as the whole pond froze over. Jack Frost's grinning face faded away. Follow me, ordered Bertram. He hopped over to a large bush. We'll hide here. Maybe we should go back to the pot, said Ruby. Not if the goblins are close, Bertram replied. We mustn't let them know where the pot is. The two girls crouched down behind the bush next to Bertram. Ruby and Amber sat very still on Kirsty's shoulder. It was getting colder and colder. Rachel and Kirsty couldn't stop their teeth chattering. What are the goblins like? Rachel asked. They're bigger than us, said Amber. She was trembling with fright, and they have ugly faces and hooked noses and big feet, Ruby added, holding her sister's hand from cover. Hush, Miss Ruby, Bertram croaked. I can hear something. Rachel and Kirsty listened. Suddenly, Rachel saw a hooked nose shadow flew across the clearing towards them. She grabbed Kirsty's arm. They were peering out of the bush when the leaves rustled right next to them. They all they almost jumped out of their skin. Oi, said a gruff voice, sounding very close. What do you think you're doing? Rachel and Kirsty held their breath. Nothing, said another gruff voice, really. Goblins, Amber whispered in Kirsty's ear. You stood on my toe said the first goblin crossly. No, I didn't, snapped the other goblin. Yes, you did. Keep your big feet to yourself. Well, at least my nose isn't as big as yours. The bush shook even more. It sounded as if goblins were pushing and shoving each other. Get out of my way, one of them shouted. 
Ow! That'll teach you. That'll teach you to push me. Yelled the other one. Major and Kirsty looked at each, each other in alarm. What if the goblins found them there? Come on, puff one of the goblins. Jack Frost will be really cross if we don't find these fairies. You know he wants us to stop them getting back to fairyland. Well, they're not here, are they? Grumbled Dava. Let's try somewhere else. The voices died away. The leaves stopped rustling and suddenly the air felt warm again. There was a cracking sound as the frozen pond began to melt. They've gone, but Bertram croaked. Quick, we must get back to the pot. They all hurried across the clearing. The pot stood under the weeping willow tree, just as before. I'll stay outside in case the goblins come back, Bertram began, but a shout from Kirsty stopped them all in their tracks. Look, she cried, the pot's frozen over. Kirsty was right. The top of the pot was covered with a thick sheet of ice. N- no one, not even a fairy could get inside. Bertram to the rescue. Chapter 6. Oh no, Ruby gasped. The goblins must have passed really close. Thank goodness they didn't discover the pot. She flew o- She flew over to the pot with Amber right behind her. They drummed on the ice with their tiny fists, but it was too thick for them to break through. Shall we try, Rachel? asked Kirsty. Maybe we could smash the ice with a stick. But Birch had another idea. Stand back, please, everyone, he said. The girls moved to the edge of the clearing. Riri sat on Kirsty's hand and Amber flew to Rachel. They all watched. Suddenly, Bertrand leaped forward with a mighty hop. He jumped straight up the sheet of ice, kicking out with his webbed feet, but the ice did not break. Let's try again, he panted. He jumped forward again and hit the ice. This time, there was a loud cracking sound. One more jump, and the ice shattered into little pieces. Some of it fell inside the pot. Rachel and Kirsty rushed over to fish out these bits before they melted. There you are, Bertram croaked. Thank you, Bertram, Ruby called. She and Amber flew down and hugged the frog. Bertram looked pleased. Just doing my job, Miss Ruby, he said. You and Miss Amber must stay very close to the pot from now on. It's dangerous for you to go too far. We've got to stay we've got to say goodbye to our friends first, Amber told him. She flew into the air and did a backflip, smiling at Rachel and Kirsty. Thank you, a thousand times. We'll see you again soon, said Rachel. When we found your next rainbow sister, Kirsty added. Good luck, said Ruby. We'll be waiting for you here. Come on, Amber. She took her sister's hand and they flew over to the pot. The two fairies turned to wave at the girls. Then they disappeared inside. Don't worry, Bertram said. I'll look after them. We know you will, Rachel said. As she picked up her beach bag, she and Kirsty walked out of the wood. I'm glad Ruby isn't on her own anymore, said Rachel. Now she's got Amber and Bertram. I don't like the goblins, Kirsty said with a shudder. I hope they don't come back again. They made their way back to the beach. Their parents were packing away their towels. Rachel's dad saw Rachel and Kirsty coming down to the lane and went to meet them. You've been a long time, he smiled. We were just coming to look for you. Are we home now? Rachel asked. Mr. Walker nodded. It's very strange, he said. It suddenly turned quite chilly. As he spoke, a cold breeze swirled around Rachel and Kirsty. They shivered and looked up at the sky. The sun had disappeared behind the thick black clouds. The trees swayed in the wind and the leaves rustled as if they were whispering to each other. Jack Frost goblins are still here, Kirsty gasped. You're right, Rachel agreed. Let's hope Bertram can keep Ruby and Amber safe while we look for the other rainbow fairies. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe for the videos.